Good morning. Thank you all for coming. It's a real thrill and privilege for the United States District Court to be convening in Shenandoah National Park for the first time. I, and I want to thank Superintendent Jim Northup for this opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You know, we work together a lot, the court and the, and the park, since the park is in um, the Western District of Virginia. Uh, and we, um, we count on the, the rangers and law enforcement officers here at the National Park um, to help keep us safe, help, help keep this place a, a, a beautiful spot for recreation. And in the words of Teddy Roosevelt, one of my favorite presidents, recreation. So we're really excited to be here. It's a great opportunity. And like I said, this is the first time this has ever been done in Shenandoah National Park. It's my privilege now to turn the focus from the park to our new citizens. I'd like to ask each one of you to raise your right hand while I administer the oath of, of citizenship, the oath of allegiance to you. Please raise your right hand. I hereby declare on oath that I absolutely and entirely renounce and abjure all allegiance and fidelity to any foreign prince, potentate, state or sovereignty, of whom or which I have heretofore been a subject or citizen that I will support and defend the Constitution and laws of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I will bear arms on behalf of the United States when required by law. That I will perform non-combatant service in the armed forces of the United States when required by law. That I will perform work of national importance under civilian direction when required by law, that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. You all may be seated. It's a little warm out here, so I will not tarry long. And I know we've got a couple of folks who are way more important to me than to speak. But, um, and I'm really, really thrilled to be here with um, James G. Northrop, Superintendent of the Shenandoah National Park, and Vince McConey, Senior Counsel, Department of Homeland Security, who are going to share some comments with you. I'm, I'm thrilled to have I'm thrilled to have both of you here. And Tom Ulrich, in a few minutes, when you pronounce everybody's name, they will see why you're here, because you are so good. All right, my fellow citizens, how does that sound? Good. Let's have a round of applause for you all. It feels pretty good, doesn't it? It does. All of us here, I want to say at the court, well, we actually are in court right now, um, but we just happen to be in this beautiful, beautiful spot. All of us in the court, and we've got a bunch of court staff here, uh, my colleague, uh, Magistrate Judge Joel Hoppe, who is here. All of us are thrilled and pleased um, that you have accomplished this great milestone in your lives today, becoming American citizens. Um, it is the only thing that I do and that Joel does as a job where people are actually happy with us. So um, we're thrilled to have you here today. We always like to do it because people, people like us today. It's really good. All right. Um, with your permission, I'd like to tell you a brief story. And given the fact that the sun is shining down on me in this black robe, it will be brief. All right. A little more than 100 years ago, two young men, boys really, saw America for the first time from a ship in New York City's harbor. These two boys, traveling alone on different ships, came to America from Eastern Europe 
through Ellis Island. I often wonder what they thought as they glimpsed Lady Liberty standing proudly in the harbor with her torch of freedom and opportunity held high. I wonder what they thought that their futures held in this new land, forged on principles of individual rights, equality, and representative government by and for the people. Each of them settled in the coal mining region of eastern Pennsylvania, worked hard as coal miners and farmers, sur survived World War I, which is 100 years ago now, and the Great Depression, and raised families. The lives of these two men intertwined when their oldest children met, fell in love, and got married. I tell you this story because the children of these newcomers to America were my parents. You see, your story and the stories of your children and grandchildren to come is, is my story. As a nation of immigrants, it is indeed the story of all of us. Today you join a new family, our American family, a family built on principles of hard work, individual freedom, tolerance, and personal responsibility. But I challenge you today to remember that you are just not responsible for yourselves. You now, as new citizens, are responsible to ensure that the ideals set forth in the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and the pledge which you are about to take for the first time as new citizens remain firm and true. So I charge you today with not just taking care of yourselves and your individual families, but getting involved in your community and helping other citizens continue to keep America the greatest nation on earth. America is truly a beacon on a hill, a beacon of freedom, hope, and prosperity. And you now, each of you, have an important role as citizens in making sure that the light of that beacon continues to burn bright. Get involved in your community, your schools, your government, and understand that along with the privilege of citizenship comes the responsibility to protect, preserve, and defend the principles on which our nation is based. That's why each of you have completed the long and arduous training on American history and government. It is because now you are a part of that history, part of that culture, and part of that government. You see, as a citizen, you can no longer look upon our government as some isolated entity off in Washington. As a citizen, our government is made up of each and every one of us. We are the government. And each and every one of us has a vital role to play in helping to keep the promise of this great nation. Now, we've got a couple of other speakers. I will conclude now, and, and I thank you. I'm thrilled to have our, uh, uh, Jennifer, are you going to introduce um, Superintendent um, Northern? Well, you know more about him than I do. So I will let, um, I will let Superintendent Northrup come up and give a few comments, followed by Vince McConey of the Department of Homeland Security, and then we'll give you y'all's certificates. And later on, I brought Judge Hoppe here in case you all wanted a picture with someone who's good looking in a robe. <laughs> uh, thank you, Judge. Well, distinguished guests, new citizens, and ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. As the judge said, my name is Jim Northup, and it is my great privilege to serve as the superintendent of Shenandoah National Park. And please allow me to echo Jennifer Flynn's initial welcome. We are truly honored to be hosting this very special event today. On behalf of the entire park staff and our families, welcome. It has turned out to be a beautiful morning, and how magnificent and fitting that we welcome 86 new individuals into the tapestry of American life here today in a unit of America's national park system. 
Between 1892 and 1954, over 12 million immigrants, including the judge's parents, entered the United States through the portal of Ellis Island, which is now preserved as a unit of the national park system. I cannot even imagine how we would begin to measure the positive contributions of these immigrants and those who have followed in American society. Today, through a partnership between the U.S. Office of Citizenship and Immigration Services and the National Park Service, we continue to welcome new citizens into this great nation in those places that the American people have decided are so special that they deserve to be set aside, not only for the enjoyment of the people, but to commemorate this nation's history. We are all familiar with the great natural area parks set aside from what was then the American wilderness, Yellowstone, Yosemite, the Grand Canyon, those large wild places that our nation was so proud of and which we felt distinguished this young nation from, our, from the land of our forefathers. But our history as a nation, good, bad, inspiring, and sometimes painful, is also preserved and honored in so many other places. Imagine yourself for a moment at Independence Hall, the Washington Monument, the Jefferson Memorial, the Lincoln Memorial, the Statue of Liberty, Antietam, Gettysburg, Lewis and Clark, Selma to Montgomery Trail, Martin Luther King Jr., Little Rock Central High School, Homestead, Trail of Tears, Little Bighorn, Chaco Culture, The War in the Pacific Memorial, Manzanar, Brown versus Board of Education, Women's Rights, The Vietnam Wall, The Flight 93 Memorial, The Cesar Chavez National Monument, The Harriet Tubman Underground Railroad National Monument, and Stonewall Inn, and the list goes on. These are all units of your U.S. National Park System and just a small sampling of those places and those events that tell the American story and preserve what is unique and special to the United States of America. An amazing mosaic of places commemorating our heritage as a nation, constantly evolving with new stories. In a time of video games and reality TV, these are the places that are real whereas Americans we can go for recreation, education, physical challenge, inspiration, and even spiritual renewal. The National Park Service often refers to this system as a large university with now 412 branch campuses. And we proudly cite the quote from author Wallace Stegner who wrote that national parks are the best idea that America ever had. Stegner described parks as absolutely American, absolutely democratic, and it is an American idea that has now spread to over 100 countries and over 200,000 protected areas worldwide. And we are so honored to be hosting this event this year as we celebrate the centennial of the National Park Service. But today, proud as we are of this idea and this system, we stand humble in what is obviously a much greater idea. The idea born 240 years ago of a nation of free people living in a democratic society, a society that continues to be the envy of the world and continues to open its doors to newcomers seeking a better life for themselves, their family, and generations not yet born. We find these concepts and ideals in those soaring words with which we are all familiar, many of which we will say or sing today. We the people, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with inherent and inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. A new nation conceived in liberty, a nation of the people, by the people, for the people, from every mountainside, let freedom ring. Land of the free and home of the brave. I pledge allegiance. I have a dream. Ask not. 
purple mountain's majesty. Crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. America the beautiful. Pause for a moment and consider what this ceremony means to each of us, individually and collectively. What are the values we celebrate here today? Rebirth, renewal, an open door, taking the first step on a different journey, starting over, associating ourselves with a new nation, adhering to a new philosophy, entering into a new covenant with like-minded but a very diverse people. An opportunity for both individuality and unity. The opportunity to have a private voice and be part of a national voice. The opportunity for individual expression, public assembly, freedom of speech, freedom from unreasonable searches and seizures, freedom of religion, freedom of the press. The opportunity to be part of a free society, but one that operates under the rule of law an opportunity to have unlimited opportunities. As we welcome these new citizens into the United States, let us all be reminded of how fortunate we are to live in a free, open, democratic society. Certainly imperfect, but one that continues to try to improve itself and recommit ourselves to active citizenship. And remember all of those who have made this possible. Today, we represent and reflect upon ideas that are certainly much bigger than any of us. It is certainly well known that America is a nation of immigrants, and a Google search uh, results in a list of remarkable Americans, all immigrants, some of whom I was aware of, some of whom I was not. Irving Berlin, Albert Einstein, Andrew Carnegie, Alexander Graham Bell, John Muir. Mikhail Baryshnikov, Oscar de la Renta, Bob Hope, Henry Kissinger, Madeleine Albright, Zubin Mehta, Gloria Estefan, Patrick Ewing, Wayne Gretzky, Gretzky I. M. Pei, Christiane Amanpour, and so many more. But like with most Americans, my guess is that the greater heroes are the ones we have never heard of. The teachers, the nurses, the truck drivers, the softball coach, the small business owners, all of the people doing their best to be good, productive citizens, to be good parents and neighbors, adding value to the fabric of American life. And this is where I see America's best ideas and stories coming together, in the arena of diversity, a diversity of backgrounds, experiences, opinions, and stories, constantly evolving in the ongoing struggle to make those soaring words a reality for all of our citizens. While I by no means claim it as an original thought, in describing that evolution, I prefer the analogy of a tapestry to that of a melting pot. The idea that each new American contributes a thread that maintains its own unique color and texture while our society continues to grow in its size, complexity, strength, and richness. The threads are interwoven, creating a fabric of the tapestry. Stronger as a whole than individually, interdependent, yet still maintaining their own integrity. The beauty of the tapestry is in its complexity, its strength, and its richness. I know from basic ecological training that diverse natural systems are richer, stronger, and more resilient than a monoculture, and I believe the same is true of human societies. It is a great honor to gather here today to celebrate the fundamental principles of our Amer American society while also celebrating the diversity and richness of our heritage and our future. As one small voice, please allow me to join in welcoming these 86 individuals into the American family and to invite and encourage all of you to enjoy and utilize your national park system as one way to learn even more about the American heritage and what is so special about this great nation. And to thank our new citizens for what you have already added and will add to the story of American life. I close with the words from the second stanza of America the Beautiful. O oh, beautiful for pilgrim feet, whose stern impassioned stress, a thoroughfare for freedom beat across the wilderness. 
America, America, God mend thine every flaw. Confirm the soul in self-control, thy liberty in law. Thank you for the honor of sharing these thoughts with you this morning. A warm welcome to our new citizens. And it is now my pleasure to introduce Mr. Vince McCone, the Department of Homeland Security's Presidential Transition Officer and Senior Counselor. Thank you. Your honors, superintendent, deputy superintendent, uh, clerks of the court, my colleagues from U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, and most importantly, my fellow citizens. What a beautiful day and what an exceptional way to welcome you surrounded by the beauty and majesty of Shenandoah National Park. It's a distinct honor to be here and to extend congratulations on behalf of Jay Johnson, our nation's Secretary of Homeland Security, as you become U.S. citizens. This park is a very special place. I have a cabin nearby and I'm here every weekend. I know families who lived in this area for generations. And I hope my history is right. Uh, I went to the authorita authoritative source of history called Google and wanted to learn a little bit more about the park and its history. What I found is that July 7th, tomorrow, in 1925, 91 years ago, was a very significant date in the history of the effort to create this national park. 91 years ago tomorrow, the Shenandoah Park Association was formed to collect funds and donated land for a proposed park in the Appalachian Mountains. The organization was formed by the Virginia Chamber of Commerce and another group called Shenandoah Valley Incorporated. And they set a goal of raising 2.5 million, a figure that it was estimated to the cost of purchasing 400,000 acres for the park. By April of the following year, in 1926, $1.2 million had been pledged, and Congress voted the following month to authorize Shenandoah National Park. Parts of the park, especially Skyline Drive, were developed with the assistance of the Civilian Conservation Corps, also known as the Triple C in the 1930s at the height of the Great Depression. The Triple C was created by President Roosevelt to employ young people at a time of great poverty and unemployment in our country. Many immigrants worked in the Triple C projects, creating an America, Americanizing experience where people from a variety of backgrounds and nationalities came together and created many of the treasures that we now enjoy in our national parks around the country. This unique history makes the setting even more significant for today, you become the first naturalized citizens that became Americans at this park and this date becomes a significant date in the history of the park. Your story is now a part of the story of Shenandoah National Park. I too am the proud grandson of an Italian immigrant who like the judges and like you came to this country. My grandfather, Vincent McConey Sr. left a small village in Italy in 1919 where his family were farmers and peasants to build a life in a place filled with prosperity and opportunity. His first images of this new country were at Ellis Island as well, in New York, in the shadow of the Statue of Liberty. He traveled cross country to a place called Chicago, where he worked as an apprentice in a mattress factory and learned carpentry. He saved money, which he sent to the old country to help his sweetheart, Mary Joya, whose name was misspelled by USCIS's predecessor, <laughs> to make her way here as well. My grandfather decided to move to what was then a bustling and growing city in western Montana called Butte, where copper had been discovered. Now, he decided he wasn't going to work in the mines, but he did know that every miner was going to need a bed to go home to. So he opened a mattress factory in my hometown, which was opened till the 1980s. He built a business of his own, and he built a family with four children in Butte, Montana. When the nation went to war in 1941, my father and his brothers joined the military. My dad actually signed up before finishing high school and was assigned a unit that would cross the English Channel shortly after D-Day in 1944. It was in Normandy, France, not far from Omaha Beach, where my dad met a beautiful young woman named Arlette a few years later, who he would wed and who would come again by ship, first seeing her new nation in the shadow of the Statue of Liberty. And USCIS's predecessor did spell her last name correctly. <laughs> So I am with you today as the son and grandson of immigrants. 
I'm with you today as you begin your journey in this marvelous land of endless opportunity. In my view, what I find so great about America, as was noted by the superintendent, is the rich tapestry our individual lives bring to our collective experience as Americans. There is no one perfect American citizen, but each of us together, collectively, moves our nation towards our shared goal of a more perfect America. Our paths to this moment were varied, and I'm awed to be standing in front of new Americans today. You were some of the thousands of people who made a choice to become Americans this year at ceremonies like this across the nation. My grandfather, like many naturalized citizens, looked back with enormous pride upon the day he took the oath of allegiance to the United States of America. Having witnessed this great ceremony today, I fully understand and appreciate that sentiment. My immigrant heritage has impressed upon me that what I attain by birth is something sacred and treasured and has led me to a life of public service to our great nation. I'm honored to welcome you today as you earn the rights of citizenship, and I congratulate you on your willingness to accept the responsibilities that go along with that citizenship. Every day I wake up and proudly go to work for the American people. I'm touched by the people I meet and the stories they share. I'm grateful to my family. I realize how lucky I am indeed, a grandson of peasants who stands today offering greetings as a senior official of the government formed by immigrants 229 years ago. So, my fellow citizens, congratulations on behalf of Secretary Johnson in the Department of Homeland Security as you become citizens into your families. Your Honor, it's my pleasure to present Tharwa Rasho Sado Al Hassan. Jada Hamadi Abadi. Rana Zahir Abdullah. Rizgar Saeed Shwani. Teferi Getahun Agaji. Mohanad Gumar Albawi. Saad Hassan Al Ghanim. Yusuf Karim Al Hasnawi. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sarah Hadi Sali Al Mashadani. Sarah Juma Rafiq. Ali Mohammed Atia Alani. P.S. Pansang Ong. Nasima Ayub. Firas Kuriakis Pasa. Teresa Bustillo Sosa. Nivia Cordet Santos. Congratulations. 
Lenny Carlson. Victor Alexievich Chepurin. Dmitry Kichuk. Sukjin Choi. Anna Penkova. Felipa de Jesus Correa Rosales. Anna Beatrice Cruz. Fulia Dayak. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Asad Sami Fatah. Viviana Magali Fernandez Leon. Viola Garcia Esparza. Hilario Gomez de la Cruz. Jareli Gomez Martinez. Elexilin Anibal Gonzalez Asensio. Lorenzo Gonzalez Portillo. Olga Valievna Gorlanova. Rasha Abdulamir Habib. Angusam Sibatu Habtamariam. Saskia Wittig Holzer. <laughs> Mohammed Abdul Jabbar Hussein. Gloria Rose Igaba. Shro Satar Jaff. Anastasia Katikin. Lidi Kaze. Adele Viviana Keffer. Ali Jader so Kalaf. Nishan Katri. Frey Girme Taferi. Ludmila Alexandrovna Kukarchuk. Carolina Garcia Cardoso. Mary Marie. Leonid Maslenikov. Boop Singh Mira. Shanaz Baheldin Mohammed. Thank you. 
Haval Fateh Jaff. Nadia Saleh Mohammed. Mirna Leticia Moran de Velasco. Joel Kaiba Muami. Nasir Jamil Nasir. Chris Gwen. Wong Nyok Gwen. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Tan To T Gwen. Congratulations. Toy Hong T Gwen. Adriana Lisseth Ortiz Garcia. Gildis Oscar Nobeva Little. Francis Paul Pereira. <laughs> Rene Orsides Rivera Castro. Yeah. Stephanie Soyes Rosales Rosales. Leslie Patricia Reeb Gunn. Jong He Lee Russell. Anne Anoma Christina Satterley. Salvatore Scoto Di Clemente. Nohemi Renata Madrigal. Peter Lidnovich Shelles. Vasami Muhi Shukur. Christina Shumako. Ever Enrique Solis Argueta. Meretu Zare Teco. Angelina Ivanovna Tikonov. Triet T. Tomlinson. Anna Briselda Trinidad. Congratulations. Jacobo Valeriano Jimenez. Tatiana Andres. Milad Helal Wadal. Zaid Helal Wadal. Atum 
Gabriel Gezer, Waldo. Thanks. Congratulations. Yeah. Wen Jun Wu. Congratulations. Congratulations. Wen Tao Wu. Ivan Tassin Yassin. Congratulations. <laughs> Matab Zul Thank you very much. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Good job. Jennifer, you, you got some closing remarks, right? Yes, sir. I, I pledge allegiance to song and then closing remarks after we've done it. Okay. All right. Um, we're almost done. I know it's warm out here and a little buggy, but we're thrilled to have you here. But I wanted to make sure that the folks who are here from the um, from the senatorial office and from the congressional office, and I think we've even got one from the, the Virginia um, legislature, uh, may want to say a word of, of welcome. Ms. Mason, anything you'd like to say from Senator Tim Kaine? Uh, on behalf of Senator Kaine, congratulations. Thank you. Mr. Sarver from uh, Senator Mark Warner's office. On behalf of Senator Warner, congratulations, and we look forward to your contributions. Thank you. On behalf of uh, Congressman Bob Goodlatte. Thank you, Ms. Garrett. And Chad Funkhauser on behalf of uh, Delegate Tony Wilt. I'll just echo congratulations on, on Delegate Wilt. Glad to have you here today. And, uh, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, from, the, uh, from the sons or daughters of the um, American Revolution, uh, any comments that you'd like to make this morning? Okay. How about from the Elks Club? The Benevolent and Protective Order of Elks, which the Benevolent and Protective Order of Elks is, is instrumental in setting up Flag Day, and they take care of a lot of things with veterans and awfully proud of the work you do. Thank you very much. I just like to congratulate all of you too. Thank you. All right. Judge Hoppe, you want to say anything? No. Okay. Let's see. Um, Marshall Sellers, anything? Okay. Now, here's the important part. Okay? Tom, you don't want to say anything, do you? No, sir. Okay. <laughs> All right. He answered that question correctly. All right. Um, what would any of you like to say? You've heard a bunch of us windbags up here talking and, and saying things, but, you know, this is your day. This is your day. Any of you want to share how you're feeling right now? Any one of you? Yes, ma'am. I'm proud to be an American. Well, we're proud to have you. Any, anyone else want to share how you're feeling right now? If not, I'll call on you. <laughs> Someone? Anyone? Yes, ma'am. I just want to thank everyone for being with me here tonight, and I'm honored. Well, you know, we're all in this together. We are all in this together as citizens to keep this country going and make it strong and make it safe and, and uh, follow through on life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So uh, thank you for that because we all, all of us, not just, not just us, but you, we're all in this together. Um, other comments that any of you, I know some of you are dying to say something. Where's my friend from Serbia? I know she was, she, what would you like to say? Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else at all? Anybody else want to make any comments? Is there a hand in the back? Someone. Yes, ma'am.
Thank you. You know, I, I shared a few comments of um, my uh, grandparents coming over here from Eastern Europe and, and um, um, Vince McConey shared a few comments the, uh, from the Department of Homeland Security. He said he was the senior government official here. Hmm. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I guess he is. Um, from one branch. From, from, from the executive branch, okay? All right, fair enough. Um, we've got some legislative branch, we've got some judicial branch, and uh, so we're all happy. Um, but we shared some stories about our grandparents and, and your mom coming over here, um, your dad fetching her from the beaches at Normandy. Um, how about any of you all? Any of you all want to share a story about you and your transition to the U.S.? Yes, ma'am. Okay, we have a microphone right here. Thank you. Actually born in the Netherlands, Rotterdam. Uh, native actually from parents, Turkish. So after I graduated college in the Netherlands, homeland Turkey. And after, since 20 years I was living in Turkey and five years in the States. So I lived already in three countries. That's really, that is really good, you know, and, and I know Turkey just went through some difficult times in Istanbul, and of course we in this country continue to go through difficult times and difficult times around the world, and let's just pledge to each other to, to keep each other safe and, and to respect each other and to be tolerant of each other, because we are all in this together. Thank you so much. Right, thank you very much, and also for this national park. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Anyone else want to offer any story of how you got here or any little message that you'd like to share with us? And yes, yes, absolutely. I knew you couldn't resist. <laughs> I just wanted to share that my ancestors came here seeking religious freedom, the freedom to worship as they chose, and they sought to give everyone else the right for that. And I want you to remember, someone paid a price in blood for our freedom and to honor the veterans that have so courageously supported this country and our freedoms. Welcome. Anyone else? Any friends or family members who came and, and who have shared this journey uh, with, with our new citizens? Anybody else want to say anything else before I... I uh, hand the, the podium back over to Ms. Flynn. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, I'd ask you to please stand, face the American flag, and join me in the Pledge of the Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If, if y'all would sit down, we're going to um, have this young lady sing America the Beautiful. We wanted you to sit down so y'all could see her. <laughs> Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of gray, for purple mountains, majesties above the fruited plains. America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crown good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea oh beautiful for patriot streams that seas beyond the years thine alabaster's cities gleam undimmed by human tears america America, God shed his grace. 
rejoice on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. And I'll just have you stay standing. <laughs> Please stand now for the retrieval of the colors. Thank you, you may be seated. Thank you for allowing us to share in this very important and special day for you. I would like to draw your attention to one of the items that you received in your National Park Service folder. Through a generous donation to the National Shenandoah National Park Trust, each new citizen has been gifted an annual pass to Shenandoah National Park. This pass will allow you and your guests unlimited access to Shenandoah for the, for the next year. We hope that we will see you often. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, and we hope you enjoy the rest of this day in Shenandoah, your national park. All rise. By direction of his honor, this United States District Court stands adjourned for the day.